Hi Scrappy friends, welcome to my channel today. I'm really excited to be sharing this page with you. Uh, this is one that I have um, I have created with um, for Chamel. So I'm super, super excited. Uh, I am working with, uh, of course, with if I'm working with Chamel, I have to use the Chamel collection. Uh, I'm also using uh, some inspiration that I've seen from Chamel using some Distress Oxide inks. I've got a rainbow of colours up here that you probably cannot see that I am going to be applying to this cut file. I'm going to leave it on the mat, uh, use my blending brushes and do a rainbow of colour on here with this photo from 2017. And like I said, using the Never Grow Up collection, I love the colours in it and some of the icons are going to work perfectly. So I'm going to pop you on fast forward and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so uh, the first thing that I'm going to do here is I've worked out how tall my cut file is from top to bottom, like the highest and the lowest point. And I've divided that by, I think I use seven colours. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, we'll work that out as we go along, I guess. Uh, and I'm just doing a very light pencil mark where I want my colours to kind of overlap just because I don't want to run out of room. If you've ever done this kind of blending, it's really easy to get carried away and run out of room. <laughs> you can see I'm just counting to make sure that I've got the right number there. Um, this pencil line does look quite dark on the screen, but it's actually not. And you cannot see it at all by the time I'm done. So... All right, uh, so the colours that I am using, and I'm doing them obviously in rainbow order, is uh, Kitsch Fl Flamingo. Uh, and you can see I'm just adding a layer. I have sped this up a fair bit. Uh, and then if I'm not 100% happy with the depth of colour, I just add a bit more. My second colour here is Fired Brick. Now I have, like I said, uh, I've pulled out the collection that I'm going to use for this page and I have matched my colours to the papers in this collection. So from pink to the purple, uh, I'll tell you the colours I've used. I've got Kitsch Flamingo, Fired Brick, um, is it Spiced Marmalade, Squeezed Lemonade, Pine Needles, Broken China, Chip Sapphire and Seedless Preserves. Uh, and you can see I've done one layer, well, a lot of those colours are more than one layer. But I've done one layer knowing that my first blend is not going to be amazing. So I'm going back in and darkening up my colours. But then you can see here I've gone back to the colour beforehand and I'm just blending out that line a little bit better so that it has a smooth transition instead of the pink stops and the red starts. So you can see how, um, how those colours are blending beautifully together. Uh, my biggest tip for if you are working with a rainbow is make sure that you uh, overextend your really light colours like yellow so that you do not lose them. I've done that plenty of times um, and by the time this page is finished I end up with um, exactly the amount of yellow that I wanted but that was because I was aware when I was drawing my lines out exactly where the yellow was going to go and that I needed to leave extra room for that. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, just leave me a comment and I'll try to explain it in a different way. Uh, so this is the Broken China. You can see I'm just blending out these colours so that I get a really smooth, beautiful transition. Um, and I love the way this is looking. Now from here, if you wanted to, you obviously could uh, add some water splatters. Yeah, because there's quite a thick layer of colour on there and you'll get that beautiful oxidised look. Wasn't what I was going for today, so I haven't done it. Um, another really fun way of doing this cut file or something like this would be like an ombre. So if you've got, say, six different pink inks, uh, you could do like a monochromatic layout and do like a light or dark or start with the dark in the middle and work your way to the lighter shades up and down. Um, yeah, there's lots of different things that you could do with a fun cut file like this. Um, yeah, I, this was a super fun page to create. Uh, the cut file is, of course, from Cut To You. And you can see that I am literally gluing it down a little tiny bit at a time. And I have intentionally stuck that on an angle. So 
if I'm using a cut file like this, I want it to be straight. And I know that I am highly likely to somehow have it not be straight. So I thought to alleviate that problem, I'm going to put it on an angle. I started in the middle uh, and I added glue to the center part of this cut file and then worked my way from the middle up and then the middle down, just using my paper towel, you saw at the end there, just to roll off any excess glue that squidged out. Um, so <laughs> that was my youngest. He's seen my sandpaper eraser quite a number of times and asked me a bunch of times what it's for. And so, cause I managed to get some ink in the wrong place, I did say to him, come and have a look and I'll show you. So that's why he was there. Um, but yeah, so I have got the, it's a six by eight, uh, journaling pad and I've pulled out some of the patterns that I want to use here. I have inked everything in the Hickory Smoke, uh, Distress Oxide. Again, another fantastic use of the Oxide inks. I love the Oxide inks. They are so super fun to play with. Um, if you haven't already, you should definitely check out some of Chamele's videos because she does do some ink, ink blending using them um, and yeah she gives a really accurate um, not accurate but detailed explanation on how to do it uh, the most like I've seen her those on her live videos which are a bit longer but definitely worth the watch if you would like some more information on blending those oxide inks so with my cut file on an angle, I did toy with the idea of trying to put this straight and then I went, meh, no. Uh, so I'm going to work with the same angle. I'm just trying to find a place that I can put this where it doesn't leave me with any weird, awkward gaps. You can see that I got all of the patterns that I wanted to use from the journaling pad. And basically I've cut them into squares. Another trick that I've learned from Chamel and just stacked them up in a way that is pleasing to my eye. And I had a, a weird gap here, so I thought, you know what, I'll just add another paper layer. You can see I'm just looking for some more here. That yellow, oh, I'm so sad. I think this is my last few Skerrix of it. But I do love that I'm, like, I'm using it. I'm not normally one to keep little tiny pieces of pattern paper like this. I normally ditch them, but this yellow is really, really hard to find. Like it's actually bright yellow. I love it. All right. Now I have a weird gap there on the right hand side that I am aware of. Adding a little bit of dimension to my photo using some scrap cardboard, as you may have guessed, that was actually from my Misty. Sorry for my head, just making sure this is lined up where I want it. Making sure I don't have any weird gaps with my letters. And I'm just going to lift up the bottom and then the top and squirt some glue under there. Again, I'm just using that cut file as my straight line. You can see I've got that awkward gap on the right, which I am going to fix up. I didn't realize until I got to this point that there was a weird gap there. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to use this dark blue, which is super fun. It's actually also the same pattern that is in my background. I don't know if you noticed, but I did not cut the center of this page out. I have left it. I think I have a couple of pieces of this. So you can see I've got one to the right, one to the bottom of this pattern, and I'm yeah, that's, that's the right words. And I'm going to add a little smidge more to the left-hand side. So I've got the three pops of yellow around the, fo the photo and then the three pops of that darker blue as well. Um, this photo was taken at a craft show I attended interstate in whatever year I said it was. I can't remember. Mm, and I haven't written it on my piece of paper here. Uh, but yeah, it was when I was part of the Color Blast design team and these are all girls that were working there and I have messaged every single one of them and said, hey, do you mind if I use this photo on a scrapbook layout that I'm sharing on socials? And they were all like, no, go crazy. 
So thank you, ladies, if you are watching, which I doubt. Um, so I was like, wow, how am I going to add a title to this? What am I going to do? So you can see I have pulled in the letters from my cut file, the word memories. I thought that works really well. It's right along the top uh, and I don't have to kind of add more words or more lettering very much. So I've run with that. I'm going to pop those inside letters up. I'm using uh, the foam, the Big Mama foam tape. I'm not sure though if it is the foam tape one or two. Either way, this stuff is incredibly amazing. I love it. I think it's the foam tape two. It's a little bit higher. Uh, I have found for me that the easiest way to do this when I'm inlaying letters is to add the tape to the page rather than to the back of the letters. Uh, I've used those silver um, such fun letters. They are a pink paisley alphabet. They are from 2012 and I wanted to bring that silver down the page so I have added the year so it's 2017 and then I have added the letters QLD on the photo which is Queensland and I've added June just above that label sticker where I've got the year and I'm just going to add a couple of embellishments as you can see this page is like it's pretty busy pretty more but you know I love it I love how this page came together of course I have to get a rainbow on this page which I have popped up tucking it in under there uh, these feathers were too cute not to use again I am inking everything up with the distress oxide in hickory smoke these feathers are so cute I'm so sorry for my head uh, I've added my journaling to that sticker on the right hand side as well and I just think it says uh, the Colour Blast team together or something to that effect uh, and then I've listed all the girls names and how can I how can I do a layout without adding a butterfly especially when there's butterflies in the collection so I added that butterfly at the top I'm going to add a couple of uh, flowers to the bottom right here, a couple of leaves. I'm just uh, layering those up between all my layers and adding some foam where I want to for some extra dimension and interest. And then the final thing that I do, oh, I forgot, I add some of these silver pearls from Uniquely Creative. And then some silver splatters using, I think it is a Shimmers product. Yes, it's Hi Ho Silver. This one is really, really pretty. It's silver, but it's got like a rainbow glitter flex in it. It's awesome. Uh, I can't remember if I cover my photo up. Let's see. Now, this is a Blings product, which uh, comes already wet. But because I wanted to splatter it, I did just add a little bit of extra water to make it a little bit runnier. You can see I'm just using the lid to mix that up. And I'm splattering that on the angle from the top left to the bottom right. Um, and that is going to finish out my layout. I love this page. I love the bright colours. I love the rainbow. Um, a big, big thank you to Chamel for inviting me uh, to play along on your blog. Um, you have inspired my creative um, genes to do things and rainbows and layers uh, and yeah if you don't know who Chamel is I will make sure I link her below as always thank you so very much for stopping by if you have any questions please make sure you leave them below otherwise I shall see you in my next video